Well, hello, everybody. How are you doing today? My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto Carnivore Carnivish. And we treat all of our cast of characters with a little smile and a little knowing that we're not alone in this. We have pickles, we have snowflakes, turtles, no matter what club members, and our latest entry into this pack of people, Goldilocks. It only came to me a few weeks ago, but I'm tickled about it because I realized that that encapsulates my personality, that Goldilocks, not a diva, but somebody that likes things her way and um, gently goes about doing it. You know, it 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 is not as selfish as it sounds. It's just one of those, you know, in particular, I like fill in the blank. But anyway, here we are today. And I was thinking about what they call the struggle. And it's the the that could be different. You know, we all have struggles. Some of us are self-sabotaging strugglers. We get in our own way. Sometimes we overcomplicate it. Sometimes we, you know, whine, pout, stamp our feet about it. Sometimes we um, make our struggle somebody else's struggle because it's it's too easy to like phew, get distracted and find fault with somebody, something else. That in in the twelve step programs they call it people, places, and things, and um, there's always plenty to blame if we're looking for that. But you don't want to be a victim with all of this. You really don't wake up in the morning and say, how can I make my struggle, you know, the world's problem and everybody kowtows to me. I see it all the time in the jail, you know, little self-absorbed people that haven't really had their share of, of real struggle, true struggle. And so it's like, if I can make your night more difficult, let me try. You don't want to be that way. And, and, and I don't think that you wake up intentionally thinking of making your struggle other people's to tend to. But then we have other struggles that we aren't looking for, that aren't in our wheelhouse. And suddenly the knock comes on the door and our lives change. They'll never be the same again. It can be all kinds of different things. It could be a serious health issue that, that befalls you. It could be um, a significant other, a loved one's health issue. It could be suddenly you have a total car and no way to get about going where you need to go without, you know, two or three days worth of, of a total hassle. And um, yet there, there can be all sorts of things that enter in. And, um, you know, maintaining Maintaining the sanity of your small little world, your wheelhouse, is important. And 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 holding on to that, you know, that when we when we have the struggle and we aren't used to it and we're adjusting and adapting, sometimes we have we forget about self-care and out the window it goes. And so we be we become all engaged in taking care of other people's things, their issues, their their challenges. Sometimes we do it out of love. Sometimes we do it out of necessity. And sometimes we do it because we realize that we're setting ourselves up. Ooh, lots of S's and all of that. It's not brought to you by the letter S. It wasn't intended to. But so we we end up with a struggle that is the struggle. And if you have a Ms. Slick in your life, if you have a food addiction, a sugar addiction, some sort of stress-related food issue, you know, when the stress comes over here, we pick up this. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, like so many others are here to tell you, is that food never solved anything. It only compo compounds the feeling the feeling of, well, first the stress, the self-loathing, the remorse. And it just it's just that pile on. And who needs that pile on when you're when you're 
taking care of something over here and all of a sudden now food has entered into it and it's the fit it's the fastest grab and go you know burying your face in it Ms. Slick will be delighted but I know that you won't be um, I know that you don't want to be there and so how do we keep from turning to food when we have a very incredibly the struggle moment going on um, it, it, it's not easy of course and so we need to hold tight to things. We need to maybe um, double down in how we do things like tracking or weighing or measuring or putting things out of sight, out of mind, so it's not so easy to pull it there. And I don't know about you guys, but there's been, there have been many, 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 many times in my life when tomorrow will be the day. tomorrow. So today I'm just going to cope. And a lot of us gained a lot of weight from coping. And to me, coping means overeating, snacking, allowing foods into my house, into my mouth, that I, when I'm on my game, I will never even think of. But I get off of my game with stress. It's so circuitous, you know, what causes what. And if you um, find yourself in a stressful situation where you're already reaching for no-nos, reaching for things that in the scheme of things, somebody would roll their eyes. If you were telling somebody that goes to Weight Watchers that, you know, gasp, gasp, I had too many vegetables or I had an apple or I had, you know, some uh, non-keto carnivore type of items that, yeah, you can count the carbs, but if you were in a healthier state of mind, you wouldn't be reaching for them, right? And so, um, you know, they'd roll their eyes, but you and I know that it's a dangerous territory for you. If you were used to having, you know, six ounces of a fatty meat and maybe a, a smattering of, of some sort of low-carb veggie and having, you know, maybe two meals a day, some eggs, some cheese, you know, like coffee until, you know, 10, 11, 12, and then a meal or two that ends by like 5 p.m., you know, a short window of eating. Or you have the one meal a day, but you find that things that you wouldn't have thought of before enter in. It's tough, right? It's, it's tough. And for some people, it means allowing back in some... Um, diet sodas, some gum, if you already gave that up, um, things like that, that that don't have any registered calories or carbs, but you know that you're using it to cope and it might not be in your best interest because you start losing that juju, that strength, that stamina, that solid program that you had. I know how it happens. It happens with one bite. And then it just gets slipperier and slipperier. And say you lose time that you used to have to meal prep. And all of a sudden, you know, a grab and go at the store works a little bit better. You, you do this to the ingredient list. You really don't want to know because it's like tomorrow things will be better, but they might not be. And so how do you handle the struggle? And so what it takes is, it, it's like a come to Jesus moment almost, you know, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, how do you exhale? Because I know when I get understressed or overstressed or overwhelmed, there is no whelm, there's only overwhelm, you know, my, my body goes into um, holding on to surviving and not doing the thriving thing. You know, the thriving part of dealing with the struggle it feels like it's a self-care sort of thing and it feels like you know it's not so much the food it's you become a, a member of the no matter what club for self-care and if that means you get up in the morning and you have that quiet cup of coffee before the day is taken away from you because sometimes it is then you get that quiet moment with the cup of coffee 
small pleasures become, for me, the glue that holds together the struggle, the stress, the tough parts of the day. And so small pleasures to me come in the form of this or knowing that I've had a bath or a shower, that my sheets are clean. I mean, just simple little things that I go to bed at a good hour and I get as much restful sleep as I can. It means that I'm taking my care of myself in ways that, you know, <laughs> we all wish if we had a personal assistant or somebody to clean our house or food prep that knows just how to take care of us, you know. I know that she likes this done this way, so I'll do it. I know that she likes, you know, in my case with Uber, a car filled with gas and the car is clean on the inside and outside before I step into it to begin my day. You know, it's just part of one more part of my day, the end of the day before. So the day beginning, you know, it's not, it's not unlike prepping your coffee, knowing what you're going to have for your meal for the next couple of days, having foods available in the fridge. It means having another backup dozen eggs with only one or two eggs left in the carton that you've got in your fridge, right? It's just simple little things. It's having enough lemons so you can have your heated lemon water if you do that. It's keeping the, the good salts at a reach for your coffee or your water or to put on your foods. It's, it's really some self-love and self-care for the simplest, smallest pleasures. And the world can wait three seconds while you have a cup of coffee, while you have a little tubby time, while you, you know, take the time to like iron that outfit, not wear something that's rumpled or could have used to wash <laughs> one more wash or one more, could use to wash before you wore it one more day. Little things like that, they keep a calmness when there's a lot of like, you know, things going through the air in like a torna tornado-ish way. And, and, it, and it just it just matters. Sometimes the stressful times will end. Sometimes the struggle will end. Sometimes if the struggle is about self-sabotage and you're in a weight gain cycle, um, you know, just putting the brakes on and stopping and do what you need to do. Just it, it's sometimes it's just so simple. You know, I still am a food accountability coach. I help people like that need that pulling together, just that I need, to, I need to check in with somebody. I need somebody that gets me, not somebody that's rolling their eyes and going, oh, here we go again. She's off on a new tangent. And like, when will she ever settle down? And, you know, I just go back to Weight Watchers when it gets like that for me. Or I just do Jenny Craig because it comes, it's in a box and I only add, you know, an apple each day and a little fresh, you know, salad every day and the rest of it's taken care of. Some people need that. I'm not, I'm not knocking that because some people just do better with here it is, get you through for the next, you know, four weeks, however the, the food plan is. Some of us need that. Um, but then others of us need to kind of buckle in and get back into that lovely routine that we had when we were, when we were thumbs two thumbs up in our life. You can get it back. It's it's tough. Sometimes you need an accountability coach. Coach. Sometimes you need to watch, you know, your favorite videos just to get it back in place. Sometimes you need to begin tracking, weighing, measuring again. Sometimes you need to go from maybe doing a little recipe type of lifestyle, food style, back to meat or meat with a little veggie. You know, is it boring? Yes, but it's also comforting in a way of self-care. The simpler you make your foods when you're in the struggle, the better off you might be, you know, staying full, getting enough protein, getting enough salts. You know, to me, it's like electrolytes, salt, and protein. You know, the rest takes care of itself. And, and so I'm here. Here I am. You can always comment here. You can contact me about the accountability part. It all works out. And sometimes we need something just for a bit. Other times we need to work on reinstating new habits, good habits, habits that keep us sane. 
Because when this starts going, woo woo, you know, the rest of the game is always challenged and compromised for me. So, so be careful when you are in the struggle and work on identifying, you know, are you doing this to yourself? Are you having no-no foods and then calling it the struggle when it's really the no-no foods? You know, if you remove the no-no foods, add more protein, um, you know, add the piece of protein, add the eggs, put the cheese on the eggs, call it a meal, which is what you see I do a lot, you know, is that safer for you at this time until you can rebuild? You know, who knows? But when the struggle hits, it, I think it's important to identify what it is. For a lot of us, especially females all our lives, it has been, you know, the stress, the struggle, the stress of taking care of a lot of balls in the air and identifying them. And what balls can I put back in the garage that I don't need to be tossing today. There's no awards for being, you know, superhuman. We don't put on our cape and rush in to make it all right again. We work on our little parts, our little parts of our day, our small pleasures, the tiny things that can go, oop, you've tilted in your wheelbarrow. You need to get better again, <laughs> right? So exhale, hang on, identify. You know, it comes back to like, the, the other video that I just did. Acknowledging, acknowledging that I can't do all of this. Maybe having a housekeeper come in if you've never had one. I've never had one, I can't imagine. I used to do, I used to be that person that came in. You know, just easing up your life where you can while the struggle is going on. If the struggle is food, it's cleaning up the foods. And you know, you've heard me say, if you're watching me, you know how I feel about all those little things around the edges type of foods that could get you in a path or in a place that you don't want to be. And you know that, but sometimes they're comforting, but it's, it's trading in the comfort of a food, of an item that you put in your mouth for something else. The bath, the extra half hour of sleep, the clean kitchen, the little bit of prepping so the next day when you wake up, it's not, ah! You know, like a morning with five kids getting off to school. We're, we're beyond that, hopefully. So thanks for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with The Struggle. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.